Now let's go ahead and create some code. Click on File and then go to the New menu and click on Project. Here, select PSOC 4100 slash PSOC 4200 design. Give your project a name and also select a location to store the file in. Then click OK. Next, under Project Template, select Empty Schematic. We will be building our code from scratch. Then click OK. You will be taken right away to the top design part of your code. This top design is a part of the interface where you can drag and drop components that you will be using in your code. Let's start by building a simple code to make an LED light turn on and off on your PSOC. First, expand the menu that's called Ports and Pins and find the menu item that's called Digital Output Pin. Drag and drop a digital output pin to the screen. Here, I'm zoomed way out so I can't see what this pin is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We can do that by clicking on the magnifying glass with the plus sign up here at the top. And if I zoom in, we can see that I now have something called pin 1. If I double click on pin 1, a menu opens where I can set some of the parameters of this pin. Right now, all of the parameters are defaulted to exactly what I want them to be, so we don't have to make any changes here right now. Go ahead and click OK. Now, pin 1 is an output and this little square next to it indicates that I have to wire something to this pin. I'm going to expand the digital menu and then the logic menu and I'm going to get this element called logic low and I'm going to click and drag one of these onto the screen and then I'm going to click on the wire tool. I'll move my cursor on top of this little box until it turns into an X and then I'll click and then move my cursor away and you'll see that this wire is following my cursor. I move the cursor on top of the box before pin 1 and then click and that connects together the logic low and pin 1. I now have a pin set up as an output, but I haven't yet said which pin on the PSOC this is going to be. That's what we have to do next. Over in your Workspace Explorer, find the item that has the extension CYDWR and double click on that. That will open up the window where you can specify which pin on the PSOC corresponds to the pin that you put into your code. The PSOC 4 Pioneer Kit has some pins that are built in already as LED lights that we can use. We're going to set this pin 1 to one of those pins. Pin 1-6 is the red LED that's built into your board, so let's go ahead and set pin 1 to be pin 1-6. Now let's write some code. The code is written in the main.c file. Let's double click on that to open up the code. The code comes preloaded with some lines here that are commented out. 
Lines of code that are commented out will not be executed when you run the code. I'm going to go ahead and delete those lines because we don't need them and they're just taking up some space. The code that you have here has two parts to it. The first part is called int main. All of the code that you put in between these two brackets on int main will be run after you download the code to your PSOC. Secondly, you have a loop here that's called a for loop. Any code that you put inside the for loop will run over and over and over again without stopping after the code is downloaded. Lines of code that are inside of int main but not inside the for loop will only run one time. But the code that is inside the for loop will run repeatedly. Let's write some code to turn the LED on, wait for a bit, then turn the LED off, and wait for a bit again. We can turn the LED on by writing the value 1 to the pin. So let's write pin 1 write and we'll put a 1 inside the parentheses. That means turn on pin 1. Next we want the code to wait for a little bit. The function that causes waiting is called CYDelay. Inside the parentheses, we write the number of milliseconds that we want the code to wait. In order to make the code wait one second, we'll put the number 1000 because 1000 milliseconds makes up one second. After every line, I will put a semicolon at the end of the line. That's a part of the syntax of C code. Every line needs to have a semicolon unless it is starting out a loop or it is a line that is one of these brackets for the loop. Now we've turned the LED on and waited for one second. Let's turn the LED off by writing the value zero and then we'll wait for a second again. Since this code is inside of our for loop, it should execute over and over and over again. In other words, the LED will turn on, we will wait for one second, the LED will turn off, we'll wait for one second, and then the LED will turn on again to start the loop over. Now, to download this code to your piece, we first need to compile the file. Compiling will allow us to check to see if we have any errors in our code. Click on the build menu and then find the build with your file name as the first item there and click on it. And when you do that, some lines will show in the output window at the bottom. At the end, we're hoping that your code will show build succeeded. If there were any errors, your errors will show down here and you'll need to find your errors and fix them and build the project again before downloading. Once you've fixed your errors and you get build succeeded, we now have to download the code to the uh, PSOC. In order to do that, Click on the debug menu and click on program. Once again, it will take a little while to get it programmed. When it finishes, it'll say device was successfully programmed. Once your device is successfully programmed, take a look at your PSOC. You should see the red LED flashing on and off at intervals of one second. If that's what you get, 
That means you have successfully written your first PSOC code. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can write this code to move our servo instead of flashing the light.